Hey everyone, it's Alan Cousins here from Ulverson Golf Club and welcome to another episode of the Friday Fix. Got a nice busy show lined up for you all this week, so stay tuned and enjoy. Okay, so to start with, we've got uh, a little update on what we've been up to uh, here in the shop all week. Weather's been great, plenty of golfers going out, um, so it has been quite busy. Um, Normally I would have a lot of lessons and fittings, but unfortunately I had a, a little op on my leg on Thursday, which means I've had to take it easy, so no lessons this week or, or any fitting sessions in, so while the leg's recovering. It's nothing drastic, just bad veins, so I had a, a minor op, which means I've just got to rest it, can't be on my feet too long. So I'm going to rattle through this video and then I'm just going to put my feet up. I've got my little bell so all the, the little helpers uh, can come and run errands for me so I'm probably probably doing Sarah's head in already with it but it's all good, it's all good, hopefully it just heals nice and quick so so far it's all been really good um, but yeah, uh, plenty of new stuff all in, out on display, all priced up, a few special offers as well so come down, have a browse, got loads of nice Galvin Green clothing in, loads of nice pink clothing um, all the hardware's in now, Odyssey Putters, Callaway, Titleist, Ping, loads of shoes as well, and uh, we've got Bailey to come and greet you as, as well as always, and if you're having a little browse around, if you're spending more than 20 quid, we'll even treat you to a free coffee out of the new brew machine, so what could possibly go wrong? Alright, so get yourself down, have a browse, have a chat with us in the shop, it's always a warm welcome. We've got the Captain's Away trip coming up on Monday the 4th of June. Um, it's at Olmskirk Golf Club, which is a really good golf course, I've played there a few times. It's a great day out and there's a coach that leaves the golf club here at 8 o'clock. So if you're interested in coming along, uh, just let me know or ring the following number. Only joking, you don't really need to ring that number. Um, that's a little bit of banter we had on last year's trip, all at my expense. So that's one thing you'll find. If you do come along on the trip, you'll have a right good laugh because uh, generally everyone takes the mick out of the pro. So it's, uh, it's all good fun. It's a good day. So definitely get in touch with us or the captain if you're interested in coming along. It's only this Monday, but there's a, a couple of spaces still available. So we had a members comp on Saturday with 113 people playing, so a good, a good entry, good turnout. The weather was great, it was cracking the flags and unfortunately the scores uh, weren't cracking the flags as the course was playing quite tough. When it gets quite dry like this, some of the greens do become quite testing so it, it turns almost into you know, a Lynx type golf course, so some quite, quite tricky conditions to play in. Um, but, however, the winning score was Scott, Scotty uh, Two Soups Pew, as we call him. Great lad, junior organiser as well. He's a good, uh, good little role model to the, the youngsters of the club. And he shot 76, minus 5 handicap, net 71 to win the competition. So, well done, Scott. Um, there wasn't too many twos either on the day. Again, another indication of how difficult it was playing. Uh, each two was worth £22.50. Pro shop credit, so well done to those who got a two. They're paying out really well at the moment, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you all this Saturday. Again, hopefully the scoring can be a little bit better and the uh, conditions are a bit better for you as well. We also had this week as well a charity golf day for St Mary's Hospice, uh, run by Dave Howarth. It's a fantastic day. Uh, loads of people turned out. A uh, load of really good support for the hospice. I'm sure it raised plenty of money for them. So really, really, you know, great to have them here at Ulverston Golf Club. On the day, we normally do a uh, beat the pro. Last year we did it where I was out on the the temp tee four and a half hours, you know, hitting shots and you know doing a, a little challenge with everyone who played. Obviously, with the condition of my leg at the moment, I couldn't do that. But what we did do instead is I hit three shots in the morning, which uh, we took the camera out for, so you can have a laugh at uh, the outcome of that. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful that one of the three hit the green, and it you know, just so happened to be fairly close as well. And it's not a bad thing, because it means the overall winner on the day was the hospice, as no one got inside you know, the best shot of, uh, of mine out of the three. So... Well done to uh, to the hospice there. They've earned some extra money out of it as well, so it's all good. 
enjoy the video of, uh, of me taking on that tenth. Okay folks, we're out on a pretty drizzly tenth tee here, um, out on Overston Golf Course and we're going to do a Beat the Pro for today's St Mary's uh, Charity Shotgun. Um, last year we had the same event, I was actually out on the tee for a good four and a half hours doing it as each group came through. Unfortunately this year I just had a, a little op on the leg uh, last week on my right leg to get rid of some horrible veins that are causing me a bit of grief. So, um, I'm under strict orders from the docs and from the boss, Sarah, to, uh, to rest it a little bit. So what I've said is I'll hit three shots, uh, providing one of them hits the green, which I'd, I'd like to think it will. Um, the closest shot will be marked, and then whoever out in today's comp gets it closer than where my ball is, I have to be pretty careful with the word in there, um, will get a prize later on in the competition so good luck to all those playing hope you enjoy okay so this is the first shot the green keepers have put the pin in a lovely position as far back right as they can above the Mackenzie so it's a nice little tricky tee shot for me that's the only excuse I'm gonna give it folks so don't worry there won't be any more coming up um, I'm just gonna play it safe I think to start with got about 140 yards probably playing a bit longer to the to the actual flag so I'm just going to hit a 9 iron. Good little tip, you notice I've teed it up on the, the left hand side of the tee block. Obviously with that flag being tight right, me going further to the left here is going to just open the green up a little bit more, make a little bit more of a direct route and you know hopefully give me a chance of, of getting it somewhere near. That bit of a block to the right, that inner comp would leave me a really tricky up and down Hopefully the second shot's going to be better. It's not bad, it looks hopefully about 10 foot away. It was a much better shot, that one. I'm just kind of hoping it's not ran through the back of the green and off because it sort of disappeared over the back ledge. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the golf ball here. It's the second shot I hit. The first one I'd have been chuffed to get up and down because it's really tight there. Just measured it out and it's at 2 metres and 40 from the hole. So anyone who gets it inside that will win um, a sleeve of Pro V1 balls today worth £10. So good luck to you all. And finally join us now out on the chipping area where we've got a really good tip of the week for you. Hey everyone, we're just out here on the practice chipping green. And today we're just going to go through some really good ways that you can pick the best club to use when you're playing your chipping. So to start with then, the number one bit of advice is when best you can, keep the swing as short as you possibly can. Okay, A shorter backswing is going to give you more control over the shot. So you see a lot of folk go out onto the course, when it comes to a greenside chip shot they've just got a go-to club that they go that they go and pick up whether it be a pitching wedge or a sand wedge and they just try and manipulate a shot with that one club um, really we need to be versatile and you know have plenty of different options with that so to start with we're going to look at a landing zone before we even pick what club choice we're going to hit so for me the best place to land the shot is on the front edge of the green within the first few feet on the front of the green always use that as a landing zone the only time you wouldn't is if you had an obstacle to go over, like a bunker or a bit of water and you don't want to short sight yourself. But unless there's anything drastic to hit over, always aim at that front part of the green. So if you look out onto the green there, you can see we've got three different flags, um, slightly different lengths. So if we were hitting to the red flag and my landing zone is on the front edge of the green, I'm going to think about what club choice I'm going to hit. So I'm going to go with... For me, a 50 degree, if I pop it on the front of the green, it should kick on and run up then uh, to the red flag. So I'm keeping my swing distance a little bit shorter by doing that. If I pull the 58 out, obviously I've got to make my swing longer. It's going to make it harder to gain consistency and play the shot as successfully as I can. So I'm just going to hit that shot now to show you. So I'm going to the red flag, trying to pitch the ball on the front edge of the green. So as you can see, the ball hit the front, 
just ran its way uphill a little bit and it's about three foot away so you can use that method um, to give you a lot more you know benefit on the on the chipping around the course obviously if it's a long green and you've got loads of green to work with but nothing to hit over then you know take a less lofted club like a seven iron keep your swing short let it run its way up the green grab a few clubs as well get down around the green give it a good practice a bit of trial and error with some shots so for example now we've got a shorter distance so i'm still going to try and land it on the front to one of the yellow flags and now we're going to have to use a, a more lofted club because the rollout is going to be less okay so i'm going to use a 58 for this next shot okay so as you can see landing it on the front edge there it rolled far less than the 50 degree option did and i've gained a good bit of control by using that thought process it's helped me to pick the right club and keep my swing distance at a fairly short level so I've got more control over the shot. So remember that tip folks, give it a good practice this week and if you like the videos make sure you subscribe.